Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Miz and Daniel Bryan get video packages. Sanity lose again. And Samoa Joe reads a letter. I am Luke Owen. Vote in the poll above my head to let me know your thoughts on this week's SmackDown Live by using this rating system. Smack damn, smack tastic, smack bang in the middle, Ellsworthy, and a smack in the face. This is the 14th of August, 2018 edition of SmackDown Live in about four minutes. This week's show opened with three SmackDown women standing in a row. Carmella lied about being a good champion. Becky he said she didn't want Charlotte in the match because she's really good, and Flair told Mella that she wasn't on the same level as anyone else in the division. So yeah, even Charlotte doesn't get the Carmella character. She then had a money line where she told Carmella she was a diva in a women's era. That was such a good line. Why hasn't that been Carmella's character all along? I mean, that one actually makes sense. Paige here announced that we're going to get a tag match next, which saw Becky and Flair defeat Absolution rather easily. This wasn't much of a match, but the finish was awesome. Instead of tagging Flair, Lynch instead dispatched of Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville one on two, tapping out Rose with the disarmor. It showed that Lynch could win in a triple threat situation and can stand on her own without Charlotte Flair. This was a clever and subtle end to the match. Backstage, Flair and Lynch awkwardly wished each other the best this coming Sunday. There weren't as many teasers for Lynch turning heel this week, but even less for Charlotte Flair. So we could probably expect to see Flair turn heel on Sunday. After announcing that Miz and Mrs. had been renewed for a second season, oh joy, Bludgeon Brothers beat up three competitors calling themselves Triple Threat. Although announced as one, this wasn't actually a match and just a decimation, and it was awesome. We then got the first of three video packages that highlighted the eight-year feud between Daniel Bryan and The Miz. These were so much better in building their SummerSlam match than throwing babies or babies crying on screen or pretending to be on The Miz and Mrs. set. The first video recapped Bryan's beginning beginnings in NXT with Miz as his pro, pointing out that Brian lost all of his 10 NXT matches and only won when he was eliminated and faced Miz on Raw. Brian didn't need Miz, but Miz needed Brian. This was great. Killian Dane debuted his new Sanity gear and then got pinned by New Day in a six-man tag. Despite being mostly ad break and SummerSlam promo, this ended up being a really decent match and was easily the best Sanity have looked on the main roster. They did, however, come out to zero reaction, so good job WWE. The second Miz and Daniel Bryan video focused on that Talking Smack promo and also brought up some real-life issues between Bryan and WWE. He said in the video that he wanted to quit the company and wrestle elsewhere, but he had made a promise to Vince McMahon to see out his contract. That added an amazing level of realism to this feud, which has been really missing in the last few weeks, which to be honest have felt more like plugs for Miz and Bloody Misses. Aiden English sang an apology song to Lana and Rusev and then lost quickly to Andrade Cien Almas. Almas and Vega cut promos afterwards to hype their kickoff mixed tag match and Rusev and Lana came out to say they will win this Sunday. It's kind of amazing how this feud feels like it's had more build than Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. The final Miz and Daniel Bryan hype video focused on Bryan's return to the ring and how Miz has stolen all of his moves. I can't say this enough, these videos were really effective in building this match and I just wish they'd split them across various Smackdowns and done more of them as there is so much more to this story than just these three moments. Like the six man earlier in the night, Jeff Hardy vs Shelton Benjamin was mostly ad break and SummerSlam promo but got really good by the end. Hardy won and then Nakamura came out to attack him. Although he got distracted by by Benjamin, Hardy laid Nakamura out with a twist of fate and swanton bomb, which Randy Orton creepily watched from afar behind a curtain. You know, it's weird that WWE have put more stock into building the Hardy vs. Autumn match, which is rumoured for the September pay-per-view, rather than Jeff and Nakamura, which is actually happening this Sunday. And the main event of the show saw AJ Styles come out to talk about SummerSlam. He said that since Joe's attack and promo about his family, he's been losing his cool. Has he? Earlier in the night, Paige asked Joe not to come out for AJ's promo, as she wants to protect the SummerSlam match. But Joe told her he's dangerous and does whatever the hell he damn well pleases. Which is why he came out on this show to read a letter. A letter that said AJ Styles never wanted a wife and children, which Joe says came from AJ's wife. AJ responded by 
keeping his cool and just standing there. And that was your go-home angle for SummerSlam. Don't get me wrong, Joe is an amazing promo, but I am getting major Claire Lynch vibes from all of this. This is AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship, and the build to it has been three promos and Joe reading a made-up letter. This was frankly rubbish. But aside from that, I really enjoyed this week's show. The wrestling was hampered by ad breaks and SummerSlam promos, but the Miz and Daniel Bryan videos were awesome. And the finish to Becky's tag team match was really creative. Maybe I'm being too generous here, but I thought this week's show was smacktastic. Watch Ollie and I give our in-depth thoughts on the Go Home edition of Raw on the Wrestle Ramble. Click the video on screen right now to check that out. I've been Luke Owen, and that was Wrestling.